Hi, this is Michael King. I'm going to talk to you today about Foundations of Fintech, the first chapter from Fintech Explained. We're going to talk about the definition of Fintech, look into its history and where the word actually comes from and how it's developed. I'm then going to present two paradigms of Fintech. Uh, I'm going to talk about different companies, technologies, and the Fintech ecosystem. And we're going to look at briefly at how Fintech is democratizing access to financial services. Fintech comes from financial technology, where the fin refers to financial products and services, and the tech describes the existing and emerging technologies that are making it possible to deliver financial services electronically. You can get any type of financial service available online via your mobile phone, the web, or other electronic device. Many technologies are involved, some of which have been around for a long time, such as peer-to-peer -peer networks, application programming interfaces, and others that are newer, such as cloud computing, blockchain, and artificial intelligence. There is no agreed definition of fintech, which is why I describe it as the digital delivery of financial products and services through the internet, a mobile phone, or other electronic device. What sets a fintech company apart is that it's born digital, meaning that the entire experience for the end customer is electronic. You do not have the alternative to visit a branch. You may not have an alternative to speak to an individual as part of getting this service. And you no longer have a bricks and mortar experience. Instead, you have clicks and servers where the process is automated end to end. CB Insights, the data technology consultancy out of New York, provides this map of the fintech universe, classifying fintech by its main products and services. As you can see, there are many different ways that you could classify financial technology companies. I'm going to use nine lines of business. Marketplace lending and credit, where you can access money in the form of a loan or a bond from an individual or an institutional lender. Crowdfunding and capital raising, where a founder or a company can raise money in the form of donations, rewards, or equity in their business. Bitcoin, blockchain, and crypto assets, which are all new forms of digital assets that are recorded on an electronic ledger and protected using cryptography. Digital banking and personal finance, which is the world of many different types of mobile banking apps, digital wallets, and other tools to manage your personal finances. Payments and money transfer, where you can use a mobile wallet or app or a website to process payments, such as international remittances, sending money, or converting money across currencies. Digital wealth management and robo-advice, which is the process of managing your investments through an automated process where all the onboarding, reporting, and investing is done automatically. InsureTech, technology version of insurance, underwriting, pricing and distributing insurance products, as well as managing and processing claims online. Capital markets and trading, many tools for trading, whether it's algorithmic or high frequency trading, credit scoring, risk management and analytics and reporting. And finally, digital identity and reg tech, where we are able to protect our personal data able to transact safely and securely while complying with different regulations. The word fintech itself has been around for a long time. Using a search on the search engine Factiva of all English language print and digital media, you can see the number of count of fintech going back to 1985. You can see a spike in the appearance of the word fintech, which rises exponentially from 2008-2009, around the time of the global financial crisis. This exponential increase coincides with a number of different events, not only the crisis. In 2006, we had Amazon's introduction of its cloud computing service, Amazon Web Services. You also had the launch in the UK of the peer-to-peer -peer lender Zopa, and in the US of Lending Club. A major development came in 2007 with the introduction of the first iPhone, followed in 2008 with Google Android. 
We had the financial crisis over this period, which destroyed trust in the banks and other financial institutions, opening the door to new entrants who are using technology to deliver financial products and services. You also had in 2008 the founding of Kickstarter, a crowdfunding platform out of the US, and the launch of the cryptocurrency Bitcoin created by Satoshi Nakamoto. Many people would say that fintech has been around since the late 1800s and that this represents the most current wave is fintech 3.0. In this article written for the CFA Institute, Arner, Barbaris, and Buckley describe fintech as three phases. Fintech 1.0 was analog technology transmitted via electrical pulses, such as the transatlantic cable and the electronic ticker tape, and this continued up until the facsimile machine in the 1966. The second wave of fintech, fintech 2.0, was when computers made their appearance and became widely used in financial services, allowing the transmission of binary data over ever-growing networks. We saw the introduction of the first automated teller machine or banking machine, ATM, in 1967 in London, UK. We had the creation of the first fully electronic exchange in the United States with the NASDAQ. The World Wide Web became publicly available around this time as well as the creation of web browsers and we saw the first rise of the internet and e-commerce starting around 1995 with companies such as Amazon. Fintech 3.0 was really about the delivery of financial products and services to retail and small businesses. It became possible because of the decline in cost of computing with the rise of cloud computing power as well as the widespread availability of smartphones, the iPhone and the Google Android, as well as the destruction in the trust of the traditional financial system caused by the global financial crisis. This rise in fintech was accompanied by massive investments in the equity of startups from angel investors, venture capitalists, and private equity, as well as later strategic investments by financial incumbents in startup companies. KPMG estimates that over $600 billion U.S. has been invested in the equity of startups. Now, there are two ways to think about fintech or paradigms, where a paradigm is a way of looking at the world. A paradigm may shift due to some external event, such as a crisis, a new technology, or some other event. Many people who are looking at fintech would argue in the existing paradigm, which I call the traditional paradigm, that fintech is simply an evolution of the investments in technology that we saw through the first two waves of fintech 1.0 and 2.0, going back hundreds of years. In this traditional paradigm, the financial system is focused on selling products such as loans, deposits, mortgages, credit cards, investment products, and capital markets products to either retail or institutional investors. The new wave of investment has been simply to digitize existing paper-based processes as a way to achieve cost savings and increase efficiency for these financial incumbents. The business model has not changed. It remains a, a single-sided business model with a seller on one side and a buyer on the other side. The type of innovations would be described as routine or radical. And the question that many incumbents would be asking is, who is providing what product and how much money are they making? There is a new paradigm, however, that's been brought on in the past decade, which I call the transformative paradigm which views fintech as a total revolution in financial services. In this view, startups focus on solving pain points for individual customers. The goal of technology is then to solve customer problems and provide a delightful user experience that is faster, easier, and more customized than it was before. Many of these fintechs are unbundling products that were offered by incumbents as a way to subsidize some products and earn higher margins on others. By unbundling these products and then rebundling them with non-financial products, fintechs are creating a better experience for customers 
that really answers their needs. Many of these fintechs are using new business models, such as multi-sided platforms that seek to bring users together on multiple sides of the platform to create network effects. They're employing disruptive and architectural innovations. And the new mantra is, who is the customer? What is their pain point? And how can it be solved using technology? To describe fintech companies as simply entrepreneurial startups is to miss a bigger picture. There are many different types of companies that are engaged in fintech, from incumbents to large technology companies known as tech fins or big tech. As you can see, the startups, incumbents, and technology companies all have their strengths and weaknesses. When it comes to innovation culture, technical expertise, we see that new ventures and technology companies are very strong in these areas, whereas incumbents such as banks, insurance companies, asset managers, and others are weak. When it comes to financial expertise and understanding of regulation, we see that the incumbents have the upper hand relative to the startups and non-financial companies. Again, when it comes to looking at the quality of their IT systems and their technology, the startups and the tech platforms dominate, whereas the banks and other incumbents are saddled with legacy IT infrastructure. But when it comes to economies of scale, access to customers and funding, there's no beating the banks and insurance companies with their millions of customers. However, these new technology companies such as Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon, Tencent, and Alibaba also have very powerful and large technology platforms with billions of users and deep pockets. Finally, when it comes to access to talent, the new ventures as well as the new technology companies seem to have the advantage with the incumbents struggling to hire when we talk about fintech, we think about technologies that are used to deliver financial services. These technologies are tools that are used by startups in different ways, combining them to solve customer pain points. A number of these tools, however, have been around for decades, such as peer-to-peer -peer networks, which appeared with the creation of the Internet or the World Wide Web, application programming interfaces that allow computers to share data over these networks. The internet itself, which has allowed websites to be used by companies to develop e-commerce, as well as facilitating email and other digital means of communication. We have distributed ledgers, which are record books of the ownership of different assets, which have been shared on computers over networks Cryptography goes back to ancient times and has been used with ciphers and other methods to make data safe using advanced mathematical techniques. And finally, artificial intelligence, which went through a boom in the 1960s and 70s, and then a winter in the 1980s, has re-emerged as one of the technologies underpinning these new fintechs. The new technologies are cloud computing, which has provided not only computing power, but also cheap storage, the development of data, big data and analytics techniques to crunch the data and, and these massive data sets, the widespread availability of smartphones, which are like a computer in your pocket, allowing you to access not only your mobile banking apps, but also many different features and functions, the development of a blockchain, which is a distributed ledger technology encrypted using the hash algorithm, preventing control of the data by any one individual or a central authority. Smart contracts, which are digital legal contracts written in code on blockchains that will allow transactions to take place, such as transferring ownership of assets when receipt is recognized of funds that take the form of if A happens, then B. And finally, machine learning, an area of artificial intelligence that uses unstructured data from different sources, video, text, as well as voice, where computers can learn to program themselves. In biology, an ecosystem is a community of living organisms and the non-living components that support them. Similarly, in the fintech ecosystem, it consists of many actors, institutions, and infrastructure 
that support the creation of fintech companies. As shown in this diagram from Ernst & Young, these stakeholders in the fintech ecosystem include entrepreneurs, academics, and technology firms that provide talent, traditional financial institutions and consumers that provide demand, corporates and governments that are also demanding fintech products and services, government and regulators that are setting policy, and capital coming from angel investors, venture capitalists, and IPOs. Fintech hubs will be centers where different companies are located physically or virtually in order to support each other to share ideas and build businesses together. And all of these talent, demand, policy and capital are brought together by fintech firms when developing their solutions for consumers. Ranking fintech ecosystems has become a pastime for consultancies and other fintech companies. In this example taken from Accenture, we can see a ranking of leading cities based on five different dimensions, government support, the business ecosystem, fintech financing, talent, and technology. They rank Silicon Valley and New York, numbers one and two, London, number three, and Hong Kong, number four. Finally, one of the hopes and one of the aspirations of FinTech is to provide access to financial services to the 1.7 billion adults around the world who are unbanked or underbanked. Not having access to financial services is associated with poverty and a lack of opportunity. Many FinTechs, known as social finance FinTechs, are looking to promote financial inclusion by making financial services available electronically at an affordable cost to customers who were previously denied access to this service.